Let's take a look at the bit synchronizer, a device that allows you to start with a baseband signal of the polar NRZ or non-return to zero category as I'm drawing here. And we begin with this baseband signal and automatically extract the locations that can be used for the sampler later in the receiver process. A little bit of notation here. We have the bit interval, T sub B, and the bit rate would be the reciprocal of the bit interval, and I'll call that R sub B. First thing we do is apply a square law device, or you could use an absolute value. Either one works fine. The idea here is to flip all of the negative going portions of the signal positive. Of course, that's already positive, so we leave that alone. And the benefit for doing this is now we have, have a signal that has regular uh, pulses that occur at our bit rate. Next, let's see if we can just grab those pulses. We do that with a bandpass filter. We use a bandpass filter that's of the narrow band type, so it's very selective and it's tuned to a center frequency of F sub B, which is our bit rate. Now a narrow band filter produces essentially a single sinusoidal component as a result. Sometimes people might say it produces a single spectral line. And of course this is operating at our bit rate, so therefore the period of the sinusoid being produced is also our bit interval. So we can really think of the bandpass filter as a device that resonates at the bit bit rate. And it produces this nice sinusoidal signal. Now in order for this technique to be effective, we, we need to ensure that the signal that we are processing is uh, pretty pretty much looking like it has equiprobable ones and zeros. It doesn't have to be precisely that way from one bit interval to the next, but as much as possible we need to see a lot of activity back and forth on that signal. Long runs of a constant signal would mean that we are not exciting the filter any longer and that signal is going to tend to die out. Now we're interested in finding the zero crossings of the bandpass filter output. So let's pass that through a comparator device and I'm specifically going to consider this bandpass filter, I'll call that BPF of T, that bandpass filter output. I'll consider the cases where this is greater than zero. So here's the first place, our comparator output will be positive and it will be positive any time that we see the bandpass filter output being positive otherwise it's simply zero. Now I'm interested in particularly finding the rising edge transitions. I'll indicate a couple of couple points where that happens. So we see that any, that any choice of either rising edge transitions or falling edge transitions also corresponds to our bit rate. So let me form the derivative of that comparator output. And the derivative will give us a nice clear indicator only at the edges. And you can use the finite difference style derivative mechanism for this this part of the synchronizer. Last of all then you can pick one or the other either use the the rising edges or the falling edges. So again we use one more comparator and we can either test the signal being greater than zero or less than zero.
And as it turns out, it doesn't really matter a whole lot because you're going to have to shift this signal a little bit anyways in order to get proper alignment with the signal you're trying to demodulate. But it, what we want to do is use these spikes as the sampling instance.